is everybody doing today? This is Mickey. Well, the last video I covered, we talked about depth mapping. And to control that depth map, we used a tone curve. In the video, I said anybody that had any questions about tone curve, I would supply more information. Well, I made that statement based on the assumption I had a video about tone curve. And when I checked my records, didn't have it. So that means we need to do a real quick video of the feature and function of tone curves to help those people who didn't quite understand it. It's a very powerful tool, a good tool that I use on just about every one of my photographs. Now basically the tone curve, which I call my little magic window, you can find it under the develop module under tone curve, and this is the tone curve tool right here. The basic function of the tone curve is to increase or decrease contrast in your photograph. And you know the operation of contrast means we make lighters light and darkers dark. And by doing that, we do make changes to exposure. Additionally, when you increase or decrease contrast, you affect the saturation of your photograph. So even though the basic function of the tone curve is for contrast. It affects just about everything that you can do to a picture depending on how the tone curve uh, is applied. Now, the real secret sauce of the tone curve is not that it can change contrast, is that it can change contrast, exposure and color based on the tonality of your photograph. And that means that based on whether it's a dark area of mid-tones or a light area of your photograph, it can make changes to that specific area. So let me just show you basically what I mean when I say that. So here, let's pull up uh, just a simple uh, gradient photograph, gradient map, and here's our tone curve here. The tone curve works from dark to light. If we increase the curve, we increase contrast bring the curve down, we decrease. But like I said, if we do it within a specific area in the photograph from darks to light, it will affect just that area. So let's look at the darks and we'll grab something low right down here. This is darks and we'll increase this contrast. And you can see the darks are getting lighter and then pull down the darks get darker. All right. And you notice it's just primarily in that area, which is the darks, you see right here in the graph. If we go to midtones and bring the midtones up, you can see the midtones, which is this area right here, they get lighter, and as we pull down, they get darker. So it's not hard to understand if we go here to our lights and we pull up, our lights get lighter, we pull down, our lights get darker. So that's the basic function of the, the tone curve. All right, now that we've looked at the function of the tone curve, let's look at the features, you know, the pieces parts of this magic window into contrast and exposure control. The first icon that we'll see in our adjust panel right here at the top is called the parametric curve. And this is kind of a predefined tone curve settings that you can use, especially if you're not familiar with the tone curve. This is an excellent place to start. The way it works is you click on the uh, icon and it brings up these four sliders down below and it divides our tone tonality areas into highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. So if we grab the highlight slider, you'll see it'll light up that part of the tone curve that it's going to be affecting and it gives you the zone of influence. So as we drag our slider, you can see the tone line or the tone curve increasing till it goes to the very top of the zone of influence to the very bottom. And you can look at your picture and you can see that area that is affecting, which is the brightest parts of the photograph. All right, and we can do that for everyone. So in lights, again, you can see the zone of influence and we can move back and forth and change that uh, contrast value to where we want it to be for that photograph. And then in darks, again, move it to you find it just the way you like it. And shadows, same way. Now, after you do all this, if it's not what you want, you want to adjust everything back to zero, you can very simply do one of two things. You can double click each one of these values, lights, darks, and shadows, or if you have it set up and you want to do everything at once, you can hold your option key down and press reset. That brings it all back to zero. If you do want to kind of get out of this zone of influence, you need a little more room. I've never found that I needed to, but if you want to, you have these three pips down here. By adjusting these pips, your zone of influence will be changed. So you'll have more latitude in either your upper 
are lower values of your contrast change uh, to affect your photograph. Again, double clicking on the little pip will take it right to where it's supposed to be. It's real easy to remember though, they're at 25, 50, and 75. And you can just move them to whatever value you want. But double clicking them will bring them back to the position that uh, you knew them to be when you first started. Again, uh, you have the targeted adjustment tool where you just click on the targeted adjustment tool finder, hover over the area that you want to change and you can see it will put a, a mark on your tone curve of where that light value is. Hold your mouse button down and drag up and down to change the contrast and exposure value of that uh, tonal range in your photograph. Again, just like before, you can't go above or below the zone of influence when you're using this parametric curve. All right, the next one is the main uh, luminosity window for the tonal curve. We click on that, and as you can see, we have no help down here. It's going to be all up to you to manually choose uh, a, a, a tonal range and then adjust it higher or lower. Again, you have your targeted adjustment tool that you can pick an area, hold your mouse button down, drag up and down to change that tonal range contrast value. As you can see, it puts a mark on the line where I was working. So just when you let go, it doesn't let you forget, it marks it. So if you could go and click on several areas uh, throughout the photograph, and you can see it's made three marks that I just clicked on here, lights, midtones, and darks. And then you can just hover over that line and move it up and down. Now, if you want to do some real fine adjustments, you could hold your option key down and that makes the movement very slow, very steady. So you can make fine adjustments. What you can also do is hover over that, that point and take your hand off the mouse and then use your up and down arrow keys. And that will change the values and value uh, in increments of one. So that's a very fine adjustment that you can do uh, using your up and down arrow keys as long as your cursor is hovered over that point. Now I'm going to click adjust option, clear everything out. You can have up to 16 different points on this curve. So you could click all through this and they're really not that necessary, but I can tell you one thing that will really help you. And that is if you're adjusting a certain area, say like this area of my tone curve, I want to adjust up. But as you notice, when I do that, I'm getting more movement up here and more movement down here. So if they are moving a very specific tonal range, the best thing to do is protect that point by adding one or two points to either side like this. So when you do make changes to that one that you are working on right here, it's just affecting that tonal range. All right, so that's a very specific tonal range. And you could just go ahead and map out more of these. So I say I want to make this uh, change in the tone curve. And you can see that it's still moving a little bit above it, but not as much if we didn't have that point in place. If you want to remove one of these points, you just double click on it and it takes it away. And as you can see, when I do that, it affects the curve a lot more than if I had a control point ahead of it. So I'll click right there, put one on and then drag up and down to control the contrast change in the photograph for that point. Now in this uh, window, in the tone curve um, luminosity window, you do have one extra thing, and that is if you find a tone setting, let's clear this off real quick, option or alt, hit reset, and we're gonna make some real basic changes here to this picture, and uh, I'm gonna raise the shadows up a little bit, drop the midtones, and bring up the brights a little bit. And let's say, and, and this isn't a good setting, but just, just to prove a point, I just want to show you. And let's say I like this setting. It's a good starting point that I would like to use on all photographs I do of waterfalls, let's say. You have the ability to make a preset so that you can pull it up again, and it's down here on point curve. There are some predetermined ones, linear, which is really the straight line, medium and strong contrast. You can also make your own and they'll show up in this window. To do that, when you've made your tone curve the way you like it, you go and click save and you give it a name. Saved, I'll say zero one and hit save. Now you can see it right here. If I go back to uh, one of my favorites that I use all the time, this one, 
You can see it changes the contrast and adds a little warm glow to it. But let's say I, now I want to go back to the one I just, just saw because it was a little cooler and that's the one I want to use. We just go and choose the one that you saved, click on it, and now those values that you had used before are now saved in place. So it's a good way that if you have a, a, a tone curve that you really like using, like I really like this one. I, like, I call it mid-contrast warm. So it's a mid-contrast change and adds a little warmth by using one of the other uh, tone curve windows, which I'm going to show you here in just a second, uh, to put that effect in on your photograph. All right, so now we have these three other windows, red, green, and blue. And this allows us to put color into the photograph based on the tonality. Now, the best way for me to demonstrate this is just to show you that gradient map again. And we're going to start with red. It looks just like the tone curve that we saw before. It's just that now we have red when we increase our contrast and we have cyan when we decrease it. And depending on what tonal range we select, that's where that color will be applied. So I'm going to put a control point here so it doesn't go really above that. I'm going to grab right here and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to increase it to, to red. You can see all the darks are getting that red color. Now the cyan is coming in because this tone, this point right here isn't protecting us. So if we put more control points in place, we'll say right here, right here, we'll put two or three and bring up the reds. Now you can see less cyan's getting in there. But the point is we can put red wherever we want in a tonal range. So if you're trying to color grade or color correct, this would be a good tool that you could use to uh, make that change. Now, uh, we can also put some in our lights, and if I bring it down to cyan, you can see that our lights are cyan colored because that's the total range we chose. The same way with our green and our uh, magenta. So I'm looking at midtones right now, so that means this area right here. If I bring up my midtones, they get the green. If I bring down my midtones, they get the magenta. And finally, the one that I use the most is blue and yellow. So if you want to add a color grade uh, to your photograph and, and you need it like in the sky, so maybe something up high like this, we can grab the, the golden hour and bring down, bring up the gold like this for just that range, just this area in the photograph. So if we go back to this photograph and I want to add just a little yellow tint to the highlights, of course, that means it's going to hit the water too. Uh, then we go up here, I'll put a couple control points in place so it doesn't get out of hand. And we'll grab this and you can see as I bring this yellow in, it brings the golden tint to all my highlights. Now this would take a little more control than what we have in time to do right now, but I just want you to get the concept that you can add color using these three controls here just by picking the right tonality range and adding color at that point. All right, a couple more things. You know, two things that are real important about tone curves. First of all, we can change tonality control, uh, color control and contrast based on tonal range. That's the most important thing about uh, the tone curve. Secondly, is that the tone curve is also available to us when we're masking. All right, and that's what I want to show you right here. We want to mask this young lady here and make her just a little darker, maybe apply an Orton effect. All right, to do that, we're just going to go ahead and say mask subject. And we'd probably wipe this one out, but we'll just stick with her right now. And we're going to go to curves. And we're going to use just the regular luminosity curve. As you can see, it's available to us within the mask. And we're just going to bring this down a little bit in our midtones and take it up a little bit in our highlights about like this and then we're going to go to effects and we're going to add a little clarity to give it kind of like that Orton effect so we want kind of a soft glow to her but remember what I said is when you increase contrast how it affects saturation and see what it's done it has really darkened her face but it has also added a lot more uh, red and oranges to her face that's when this slider right here, Refine Saturation, comes into play. All you have to do is drag it to the left and it will refine that saturation and decrease the saturation to where we get a more realistic look. So there you can see, just bring that saturation down, 
This was before, after, before, and after. And even though that we're looking at this with N mask, this refined saturation is also available to you in the global settings for the tone curve in this area right here. Well, there you have it. That's the tonal curve in a nutshell. It's not everything that you want to know, but it's just the basic nuts and bolts, pieces and parts that you can get out there and use this to enhance your photographs. If this is something new to you, I hope I covered most of it so that you can go out and start experimenting with it. If it's not new to you, I hope it gave you some good reminders of what this tool can do for you. And if anybody has any questions, please shoot me an email, drop me a note on YouTube, and I'll get back to you and help you out any way I can. And as usual, I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thank you.